I want to talk to you all today about one of the dumbest cryptocurrencies I've ever had the displeasure of encountering, Organic Freshcoin. Organic Freshcoin was a bullshit initial coin offering or ICO run by two Florida Republican consultants who were later indicted in a multi-million dollar real estate fraud scheme. Why is it always Florida? So, what was Organic Freshcoin and what was it supposed to do? Well, let's listen to them describe it. Introducing Organic Fresh Coin. Have you ever bought a fruit or vegetable in the store and wondered what you were buying? Where did it come from? Is it genetically modified? Was it grown in polluted soil? We have just solved that problem. Our technology will allow all consumers of our product to know exactly where the product was grown, as well as even test the soils and produce in a lab and share the results with our consumer. Even the date the seed was planted to the date it was picked. Even the person working that day who touched your fruit or vegetable. And that's the way it should be. So a bunch of vague promises around how it's going to track your food. Specifically and somewhat creepily, they suggest that this solution will let you know every individual who touched your food. I've never picked up an apple and said to myself, I desperately must know every single person who has touched this apple before me. But let's say you desperately need that. You may still be wondering how they're actually going to accomplish that. Well. They say something about RFID tags and QR codes, and that's somehow going to accomplish it. Details are somewhat sparse here. Now, Organic Freshcoin is far from the first crypto project to market itself with some nonsense about tracking food supply chains, but this is one of the only ones that claims that it was going to unlock a new economic model without the middleman for farmers and consumers. Though unfortunately for us, no detail is given on how that hypothetical economic model would function. I guess you would go to your farmer and pay them using organic fresh coin, and then they would give you the food, and you'd be able to use the rest of your organic fresh coin to go and track how the food was produced, everyone who's touched it, you know, all the things you need to know about your apple. And this would be better. This is clearly better. You understand why this is clearly the better economic model, right? I hope you do because I don't. The actual coin itself was developed by the same team who gave you such other incredible cryptocurrency projects as Plaque, WeGo, and my personal favorite, Kodak coin. Unfortunately for you, this is not where the weirdness ends with this coin, though. This ICO was going to be one of the top 10. With that said, we expect to be one of the top 10 ICOs or initial crypto offerings for 2018. Thanks in part to their partnership with the Belarusian government. OFC is the first cryptocurrency in history that is backed up by the Republic of Belarus and is a legal ICO. Yep, Lukashenko's Belarusian government. Yeah, that one. They claimed they had 20 million acres ready for farmers to expand into into Belarus, which was surprising to me because 20 million acres is about 80,000 square kilometers, and Belarus itself is about 200,000 square kilometers. So I'm assuming the land they're talking about has to already be occupied by someone, right? And so how were the farmers going to expand into this? Did they mean all the farmers in Belarus were going to become organic fresh coin farmers? It's really not clear and it doesn't matter because again, this was all bullshit, but it's such a weird detail that they had in their materials. The point person for the Belarusian side of this ICO seemed to be the late Mikhail Morgulis, a former dissident of the Soviet Union who was on the advisory board for the ICO and was also named Honorary Consul of Belarus to the Florida Consulate. Morgulis was a recipient of the Silver Archer Award, an award given to those who advance Russia's interests in the United States. He also ran the Russian diaspora group, the Russian Community Council of the USA, or KSORS, in the Russian acronym. This organization was reportedly being investigated by the FBI when they chose to shutter the organization. Reportedly, federal investigators were specifically interested in Morgulis. Morgulis had worked in 2016 and 2020 to encourage people to vote for Trump, even claiming in one interview that he was personally responsible for passing a statement from the former Ukrainian prosecutor Viktor Shokin about the Bidens to Congress. For those who are unfamiliar with the backstory here, I envy you. The removal of Viktor Shokin is a central part of theories surrounding the Bidens' activity in Ukraine, especially those of the more conspiratorial ilk. 
Some theorize that the removal of Shokin as a prosecutor was a move by Joe Biden to prevent investigation of Burisma, a company that his son Hunter Biden had done some work for. However, it is important to note that many, including anti-corruption advocates in Ukraine, had been pushing for his removal long before that, and they specifically cited his unwillingness to go after Ukrainian politicians. There were literal street protests for his removal, and pressure from the EU, the IMF, and yes, eventually the U.S. government led to him submitting a letter of resignation. But he would later ignore that letter of resignation, return to the office to launch raids against anti-corruption groups before Parliament finally forced him out. Furthermore, reporting suggests that he was intentionally not advancing the Burisma investigation and was trying to use it as a way to solicit bribes. Based on the documents that have been reported on by Reuters, Hunter Biden's dealings with Burisma occurred after the period they were under investigation for. But I will admit that Hunter Biden's involvement in this company certainly makes the Obama administration and Joe Biden's anti-corruption activities in Ukraine easier to challenge. Donald Trump would later pressure Ukrainian President Zelensky to try to get him to announce an investigation into the Bidens based around these connections to Burisma, and Donald Trump would be impeached for this. This is why it's so important that Mikhail Morgulis, who was working with Organic Fresh Coin, claimed he was the one responsible for passing documents about the Bidens from Shokin to Congress in the lead-up to the 2020 election. It shows some window into how organic fresh coin was connected to key parts of this political influence operation. Here's a picture of Mikhail Morgulis with Keith Ingersoll and Yulia Konstantinova, the president of organic fresh coin. The U.S. lead for this project appeared to be Keith Ingersoll, a Florida Republican consultant. He is a financier or money man in the Florida political scene. For Organic Fresh Coin, he was listed as a vice president, and the office for Organic Fresh Coins Incorporation was the same as the office for his other company, KI Consulting. Another part of their U.S. team was James Adamsik, who was called a partner of Organic Fresh Coin. James and Keith are the two who would later be indicted for their involvement in a $12 million real estate fraud scheme. The day after their indictment was announced is unfortunately the same day that Mikhail Morgulis' Facebook account announced his passing. Somehow, we are still not done with the weirdness surrounding this cryptocurrency project. As I mentioned, they conducted an initial coin offering, which is where crypto tokens are sold to the public. However, their ICO does not look like a normal ICO. They created a total of 350 million tokens while advertising that they were going to be selling them at two rates. $1 per OFC was the normal rate, and they offered a special deal of $0.50 cents per OFC for early investors. They had a soft cap of $15 million raised and a claimed hard cap of $55 million raised. Though again, it's unclear exactly what was meant by those. The token distribution does not look at all like investors were buying at that rate. In 2019, almost all of the tokens, 300 of the 350 million, were transferred to a single wallet. This amount represents about 86% of the total supply, which is similar to the 88% they claimed would be available to the public. In those same materials, they claimed an additional 10% would be set aside for the team and founders, and that seems to match the amount found in this wallet. They claim to have reached their soft cap of $15 million in fundraising. Now, this is probably a coincidence, but 86% of $15 million happens to be $12.9 million, which is pretty close to the $12 million real estate scheme that Ingersoll and Adamsik would later be indicted for. Definitely a coincidence. Well, probably a coincidence. Let's call it a coincidence. I mean, the government of Belarus would not have partnered with something unsavory. Organic Fresh Coin was never listed on any exchanges, and no activity, development, or otherwise has occurred in years. Now, before I begin my next long-winded explanation, I need to be clear that no one involved with Organic Fresh Coin has been indicted for money laundering, and we do not know it is a money laundering operation. But you may be wondering how an ICO could be helpful to money launderers. So let's talk about that. Imagine you have a big pile of hot money that you need to do something with. You take that money, you go to a rogue over-the-counter trading desk with lax policies, and you convert your hot cash into nice cryptocurrency. But you don't actually want cryptocurrency. 
You want money in the banking system because people don't buy and sell things with cryptocurrency. And so what are you going to do with it? So you need to find a justification to have that crypto, sell that crypto, and reintegrate those proceeds into the banking system. One hypothetical way you could do this is by setting up a company that conducts an initial coin offering. You start selling some token that this company offers, except you are actually the one who are buying up all of that token using the cryptocurrency you purchase from the over-the-counter trading desk using your hot funds. If you're smart, you'll do this from a whole bunch of different wallets that you distribute it to. And if you're dumb, you'll do it all to just one wallet. Now, the company you set up has a justification for having this cryptocurrency. They just conducted this ICO. They did this sale, this other cryptocurrency, and that company that conducted the ICO sells the crypto they gathered in the sale, which again is all coming from that hot money, and they now have the proceeds of that sale, money in their bank account, and they are good to go. This works even better if hypothetically you can get a government or something on your side who's able to help you get a bank account and deal with some of those difficulties that many other cryptocurrency companies have, hypothetically, of course. Congratulations. Through one inauthentic initial coin offering and a couple of over-the-counter transactions, you have helped obscure the flows of this dirty money. Was this what organic fresh coin was really for? Of course not. They're on the verge of tracking all food all the time. They just need a couple members of their team to beat a couple of uh, charges and then tracking all the food all the time, everyone who touches it. That's the real goal. I hate to say it, we're still not quite done with this story. So remember how I said organic fresh coin was registered to the same address as KI Consulting? Well, KI Consulting was doing work with the Seminole Tax Collector's Office when it was run by another corrupt Republican, Joel Greenberg. You may remember Joel from the coverage of him stealing from the office to buy cryptocurrency or burning down an office with Bitcoin mining. You may also remember him from his connections to Matt Gates and the sex trafficking investigation there. Joel has also been indicted. It is unclear what work Ingersoll was doing for Greenberg. Samuel Ames, who based on the recent January 6th committee work was in some part responsible for the 1776 returns and insurrection plan, was also working for Greenberg's tax collector's office. Small world. In that same small crypto world in Florida, we see Erica Gemma, or Erica Flores, depending on which name she's going by that day, a cryptocurrency advocate and venture capitalist in Florida who allegedly was the one responsible for passing along the 1776 returns, the insurrection plan, to Enrique Tario of the Proud Boys. Organic Fresh Coin is this small window into this dangerous alliance between these Republican cryptocurrency advocates in Florida and attempts to influence and disrupt American elections. On its surface, it's just a bullshit several million dollar crypto nonsense like so many others. But you look a little bit deeper and you start seeing this insidious network down there. And the full extent of that is still being revealed. This makes our ICO one of the most secured. It's not a secret any longer that cryptocurrency has had extraordinary gains in the past several years, on average of 1300% as a matter of fact. It is projected for this year that over 2 trillion US dollars will be invested in this market. With that said, we expect to be one of the top 10 ICOs or initial crypto offerings for 2018. 